How you doing, AP Econ students? This is Mr. Clifford with ACDC Econ. We're talking about the long run supply. We're going from long run to short run, back to long run again, to show you how this thing is actually created. You already know about aggregate demand and aggregate supply, right? Aggregate demand is the demand for everything. Aggregate supply is the supply of everything in our entire economy. Right now, you see our price level and our current output, our GDP at full employment. Let's say there's an increase in aggregate demand. So right now, we're in the long run, and we're going to go to short run. Let's say aggregate demand increase. Now we're here at this point. We have an inflationary gap. The question is, what's going to happen in the long run, right? In the long run, eventually, wages will go up, right? Right now, if we have inflation, there's higher prices. Workers are going to demand higher wages, right? In the long run, if they get higher wages, what happens to aggregate supply? Well, it shifts to the left, right? Aggregate supply would decrease when workers get their higher wages and the resource prices go up. Aggregate supply shifts to the left. And what does that do? It puts us right here, boom, right back in the long run. So we start here, long run, short run, back to long run again. And that puts us on the long run average supply. Let's say there's a decrease in aggregate demand, right? Aggregate demand has fallen, price level fell, quantity fell. We're now here at a new equilibrium in the short run. We have a recessionary gap, right? Now we have a low quantity, which means high unemployment. And in theory, if wages and resource prices are flexible, the idea is this. If you're unemployed, let's say there's 15% unemployment, right? And you're unemployed, you lose your job, you're willing to go work for another person for less than what you used to work at your other job, right? You'd accept a lower wage, right? right? And so the idea is if wages are flexible and prices of resources could fall, that would cause the aggregate supply to increase. Yeah, increase, right? From here to here to here, and long run to short run back to long run. Bonus round. Now, there's a debate about this one, right? There's not much debate about this one. When we have an inflationary gap, eventually wages go up. But the debate on the other side is, should we wait, or can we even wait for wages to fall? In theory, it makes sense, but because of unions, because of contracts, because of all different sort of things that keep prices and wages from falling, that doesn't really allow aggregate supply to shift to the right. That's one of the key differences between class economists and Keynesians. Right? The Keynesians like, all right, let's shift that thing over. Let's increase aggregate demand, get that thing over, shifted, let's not wait. Right? Keynes said, in the long run, we're dead. There's no reason to wait right, while people are unemployed. On the other hand, the classical theory is, don't have the government go deficit spend to try to force this thing to happen. It'll automatically happen if you let markets do what markets do best. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Until next time.